high are expected tomorrow. The weather, it should be sunny and 70 tomorrow with a few showers possible tomorrow night. The city of Hammond, Indiana thinks it's on to something. It's expanding tests on a new fuel made not from petroleum but from vegetable matter. Rich Samuels reports on how Hammond may have found a fuel that's cheaper and greener than diesel. The fuel thus far has been field tested in a single blue Hammond garbage truck. But Esther Hall, developed by the Naturally Renewable Group of Chicago, has received high marks. We've been running it at this point for four months. Uh, and we've happy, we're happy with what we see in this vehicle so far. So we're going to expand the program, six more vehicles, and you know, open it up to more drivers and uh, get their input also. And if this turns out as smooth as the first four months turned out, we're running with this program. Uh, it, it gives us an opportunity to save 30 to 35 percent on, on a, you know, for a gallon of diesel. This is a great opportunity to save money for the taxpayers. The benefits are uh, they get to use a clean burning fuel. That's good for the environment. They get to save money uh, running their trucks. And uh, the farmers that grow the crops get to benefit too. So somewhat modest facilities at present, huh? Yeah, very modest. The Naturally Renewable Group's headquarters is in a small warehouse on Chicago's southwest side. It does not have its own manufacturing facility. The product is presently shipped here by rail from a refinery that manufactures the product from vegetable matter using a secret formula. It's a heavy molecular, high molecular weight uh, oxygenate that we blend with uh, vegetable esters and uh, we have a proprietary formula for blending and we also have a patent on some of our additives. It's a renewable resource with uh, essentially no greenhouse gas emissions because what it takes to grow the plants is emitted when it's burned. No fossil materials at all? No, there's no fossil materials. And how do you do in terms of the emissions? We, we have a, a, on a smoke opacity test, there's zero emissions. And as far as we go, as compared to diesel or biodiesel, we're about uh, 90 9% less polluting than diesel and about 40% um, less polluting than biodiesel. Decades of preoccupation with fuel economy fueled the development of Esther Hall. We had uh, developed uh, different ways of getting better mileage over the years with different fuels back in the 60s and 70s and we, we knew what fuels could run vehicles the, the entire time we were developing it. And when fuel prices started to go up, we determined that this was the time to enter the market. Who are the people you want to sell this to now? We want to sell it to strictly uh, commercial trucks. Trucks that uh, are uh, being driven uh, 10 to 12 hours, 18 hours a day, that are the uh, most pollutant of all the uh, uh, vehicles on the road today. Though the naturally renewable group's present market is limited to Hammond, it's already dreaming of expansion to China. China, with its economy developing so fast, growing 10%, uh, uh, you know, for the last 20 years, uh, its consumption of uh, fuel increased at an even faster uh, pace. So uh, China definitely needs oil. Esther Hall, by the way, gets high marks from the team that drives the test truck. Well, it drove it before we put that on there, and since we changed it over, it's so much quieter, smoother. It runs, it runs a lot better, and you ain't got to put up with the diesel smell, the backup. Esther Hall's only apparent downside is that its emissions smell like french fries, thus inspiring hunger and increased consumption of a food better enjoyed in moderation. For Chicago Tonight, this is Rich Samuels. And now to Joel Wiseman and the pain at the pumps. Joel. That's right, Phil. We could be paying more than $4 a gallon here this summer. Just today, the price of a barrel of crude oil broke another record, rising above $72. The all too familiar reasons were cited, short supplies, tension in the Middle East, and changes to summer fuel formulas. Are all continuing excuses, or are they real? Who should take responsibility? The oil industry with their record profits, gas-guzzling Americans, inefficient cars, politicians, or all of the above? For some answers, I'm joined by David Saikuda, Executive Director of the Illinois Petroleum Council, Paul Bryan, Director of Communications for the Chicago Automobile Trade Association, and the host of WLS Radio's Drive Chicago, and Brian Imus, Senior Policy Advocate for the Illinois Public Interest Research Group, a consumer advocacy organization. 
Welcome all to Chicago Tonight. Hi, why don't we begin with you, Mr. Saikuda. Tell me, why is it so necessary to keep raising the price of gasoline? We have a perfect storm of factors right now. A crude oil, what we make gasoline from, of course, as you said, is trading at a high level. A lot of that has to do with Middle East politics. A lot of it has to do with record demand around the world, particularly on the Asian rim. Uh, demand is up here, but not nearly what it is there. That's the biggest single factor in gasoline prices. That raises everybody's price. Several specific factors for the Chicago area that make the price uh, more painful. Can stop that from happening. We need uh, to lower our own demand and our own use of oil by making our cars go further on a gallon of gas. Well, lucky for you.